Hey, it's Peter. I'm doing some multi-channel drum work today with Native Instruments Abbey Road 1980s drummer. This uh, comes from a question that I got from a user named George Jefferson, 1826. Uh, he says, how do you route Abbey Road drums, kick on an aux track, snare on its own aux track? So this is like multi-channel drum recording. This is similar to the way you would work if you were in a recording studio and you had a real drum set with mics all over the place and you wanted to individually, discreetly process each channel on its own. This is the same if you're on a Windows machine. It's very similar in other DAWs and previous versions of Ableton Live. Um, it's the same on earlier versions of Contact as well. Tips. Uh, it's very important to do this in the same order that I do as you follow along. Assumptions. Uh, I'm assuming you already have at least a basic understanding of live and you know how to make new tracks and name them and switch inputs and outputs on tracks. I'm assuming you already know how to load sounds in contact. If you need a quick intro or review of the Native Instruments Abbey Road Drummer series. Look for my video on that. All right, let's get started. I have a new Ableton session that I made. It has three tracks. The first track is uh, a MIDI track, and you can see that there's two audio tracks also. Let's name these tracks. The MIDI track, I'm going to name Drums room. The second track I'm going to name kick. And the last track I'll name snare. If you're not seeing the I.O. section here, the in and out section, you can turn that on and off to show over on the bottom right of your screen. See, it says I.O. There's a little yellow circle button that says I.O. Um, if you engage that, it shows the in and out section. Let's instantiate contact. Here's my plugins folder. Contact 7 is here. I'm just going to drag that straight to the drums room track, that first track. If I click on the little wrench, here comes contact. If your view of contact looks a little different than this, take a note up at the top. There's a couple of little icons here that control the view that you have. The one that shows two squares switches from the library view to this view. And you want to see this view where the library is on the left. And here's where we'll load contact in a moment. Also, you'll notice right next to that icon to the left of it, you see here that there is a square that's divided into sections. This allows you to pick different uh, components of the view to show. So you'd want to have the outputs view visible and that includes this little mixer item at the bottom here. Let's load a routing preset first. It's important that you do this even if you already have some outputs available. There's a pull down menu. It says presets slash batch configuration. Go in here to the factory list. I'm just going to choose stereo 4. We can name these outputs so that it's easier to recognize them later. Um, just like we did earlier, this first one, I'm going to name it um, Drums Room. And I'm going to name the second one Kick. To name these, you just select them and type. And I'll name this one Snare. I'm using the 80s drummer. This is the same for the other decades of drummers. I'm going to load the AR80s black kit light for my example. You just drag it in to that space. Quick review. Uh, there's tabs, four tabs at the bottom of the Abbey Road drummers. The tab all the way to the right says mixer. And everything we're doing today is right here in this tab. If you need a review of how the Abbey Road drum series works, see my other video about that. Let's go back into Ableton Live for just a moment here so that 
we can make a MIDI clip to test all this with. Right in the drums room track, the MIDI track, I'm going to create a new MIDI clip and just program in a little beat into this thing. See what this sounds like. All right, little kick and snare, a little boom bap for you. Let's do some routing in contact now. Okay, there are a bunch of tabs, one for each channel or mic of the drum kit. I'm going to select the kick, and then there are tabs below that for each processor and there's also one that says settings so click on settings I've selected the kick I've selected settings and you can see there's an output section over here right now it's currently selected to the master that's the default but if I click on that I have something named kick that's available that's that channel that we named earlier now I'm going to click on the snare tab so it's selected and I'm going to do the same thing I have the settings tab selected and for the snare I'm going to choose the snare output. Let's go back to Ableton Live. Inputs and outputs. For the kick track, select the drums room and do the same for the snare. And then for the input below that, choose for the kick three, four, contact seven, and for the snare, choose five, six, contact seven. Lastly, engage the monitoring for each of these tracks. You click on the thing that says in, and they turn blue. Now let's see where the sound's coming through. So what you're seeing here with these meters and what you're hearing is that the room sound, I'll just solo it, the room sound of the kit is coming through here on the first channel. And the kick is coming through alone here on the second track. And the snare is coming alone here on the third track. Here's the kick and snare drums. And then what I like to do is bring the overheads in slowly till I like it. Again, I want to thank George Jefferson, 1826, for asking this question. Remember, doing the steps in order is important. If you have trouble with this, it might be because you did the steps out of order. Um, see my videos for getting started with the Native Instruments Abbey Road Drummer series. And put your questions in the comments. I'll make a video response. Thanks. See ya.